Uh, well, as I've uh, said, um, casts uh, don't change an object's class, and um, here's some of the consequences of that. Um, same sort of setup uh, arrangement of classes as before, but uh, uh, this time uh, um, we're uh, passing uh, the variable this, in this case is of type T3, because we just um, created a T3 there and uh, called test. So this is of type T3 there. And if we cast it to type T1 and try and set this um, variable T3 of type of type T3 equal to that, it will give a compiler error, which is why I've commented it out. However, if you ask whether this thing on the right here is an instance of T3, the answer is yes, it is, because it prints out T1. This is instance of T3. So, okay, so supposing we set this um, thing, which is uh, this cast to type T1 to a, a variable of uh, type T1, and uh, ask again, is it an instance of T3? And uh, even after assignment, it remains an instance of T3. Okay, now I could equally well have um, uh, assigned it rather to T1. I could have put I in there or T2, it uh, would have the same effect. Um, now, uh, you'll note that the com it's the compiler here which prevents that assignment of the uh, T1 cast to this variable of type T3, even though it is possible. And we know it's possible because this is a, a test of whether it is possible to do that assignment. And since that came out as true, as I said when I discussed instance of, it turns out to be true, that means you can assign to a variable of that type. However, as I mentioned at the time, it might require a cast. And um, if you think about what cast you need to do, then uh, fairly obviously it's a cast to T3. You can take whatever that is, cast it to T3, and then you can assign it to that variable. And that works, of course. But um, what we're doing here is just taking this, uh, which, this, 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 I suppose, and um, uh, we're uh, upcasting it to type uh, T1 and then downcasting it again to type T3. So you might as well not have moved it in the first place, obviously. So that's a lot simpler. Uh, this example here uh, illustrates the different uh, sort of behavior for fields and methods. And what we got here is this class uh, greet, which um, has got a string in it, uh, just says hello, and uh, a method that returns a string. And uh, we're going to look at a different behavior of uh, this field here, intro, and this method here, hook. And uh, this one here uh, extends that and uh, it prints out, same, does the same thing again but this time for um, uh, Swiss German and that's the equivalent in Swiss German, Grutzi mit Nerd okay so here we go uh, uh, what we do is um, uh, this uh, the type here is greet so it's going to be that type in each case and we're going to new uh, each of the respective classes and print out and pretty, pretty clearly uh, the first one English intro English who is going to print out hello everybody and the the next one Swiss intro Swiss who is going to print hello mitten and because um, uh, intro being a field and that being greet is going to be that that gets picked and uh, uh, again for who though it's going to be the overridden one that's taken because that's a method and of course if we cast we cast because we, we can do because it is of type Swiss green right so if we cast it of course it's going to print out the full Swiss version there okay right then uh, it's a rough sort of summary of what we've got so far. Um, 
uh, fields and static methods um, hide and instance methods override. Okay, that's a different sort of behavior that you get as a result of that. Um, a cast um, can reveal what's hidden and uh, as you can see cast has no effect on uh, this here because you're getting the overridden version in both cases and um, a super can bypass overriding when followed by an instance method and when followed by a field or static method it acts like a cast now of course I can't use super anywhere in there because for a start it's a static method and you can't use super in a static context and um, uh, super as well um, will only over, will only bypass your own overriding okay, it won't bypass the overriding occurring in a different class and this is class high right? so um, no use of super here would help I could, of, course, of course I could put super in here <laughs> now, at this point this is not a static context here so I could put super in there and uh, of course uh, it would uh, override it and uh, by depending on what I put after it I could uh, I could return that string instead for instance if I did um, super dot who there it would uh, Turn everybody there. Um, if you recall, um, if you declare a class as being final, it means that um, it can't be subclassed. And uh, there's a similar sort of mechanism for methods as well. If you declare a method as being final, it means it can't be overridden, uh, that's if it's an instance method, and it can't be hidden if it's a static method. Okay. Now, um, as a result of that, um, uh, pretty obviously the word abstract and final are mutually incompatible. And you'll get a compiler error if you declare a method, or a class for that matter, as both abstract and final. Now, um, similarly, um, you can't have um, a method both private and abstract because a private method is invisible to all other classes and so it's impossible to give a concrete implementation of it. That's why that combination is going to give an error, compiler error as well. Um, you can, in fact if you want to, ha have a field um, with the same name as a method. Although this is uh, discouraged a bit really. It's not probably a good idea. but. Um, uh, the compiler of course can tell what's being referred to because method names are always going to be followed by a, um, a left, uh, left bracket uh, if you ignore all the any possible white space between the name and the left bracket of course now um, uh, here's something about fields um, a static field can hide an instance field and an instance field can hide a static field so that's quite different to the situation with methods um, now there's a couple of technical terms um, shadowing um, shadowing uh, we've um, uh, covered a bit as well is um, it occurs entirely within a class and it's where one declaration occurs within the scope of another and uh, both declarations have got the same name um, uh, a variable locally declared in a method will um, of course shadow any fields in the class with the same name and this was, uh, I covered this when I looked at uh, classes um, there's another technical term, obscuring not of much use really, but um, it's where a name of one type hides another. Um, if you look under class name clashes, there's an example there where a class could obscure a package. And that's in Java part 4.12. That's not of much use, that 